Hello and welcome to our time of devotion and prayer for Sunday, July the 12th, 2020. Uh, I'm at the boat dock here in uh, North Palm Beach before it gets busy, hopefully, because uh, um, there'll be a lot of people going out today. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm, I'm so glad that you're here, um, that you're starting your day in this way or creating a time of your day or in your day for this very important practice of going to God and um, laying your prayers and your concerns and your worries before God um, to be refreshed and to be renewed. So uh, today we're going to have a, just a brief recap of what we talked about yesterday because it kind of leads into what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, you draw near to us in Christ and you make yourself our guest. Amid the cares of our lives, make us attentive to your presence that we may treasure your word above all else. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. So, we're going to be reading from uh, the book of John today, the Gospel according to John, chapter 6. I'm going to start around verse 26, but what I want to begin with is... Um, we talked yesterday about living word, a little bit about um, just briefly about what living word is. I think I gave you a homework assignment to, to read um, chapter 4 of John's Gospel in its entirety. And, and I'll do the same. I'll invite you to do the same. Uh, we'll be in chapter 6 today. So I'll just be reading a small piece of it. But I invite you to look to John 6 and read it through on your own in, in its entirety so you can uh, possibly pick up even more of what might be going on there uh, and hear the Spirit speak to you in new ways. Uh, so I drove by the church this morning and uh, was thinking about how uh, on Sunday mornings, uh, every Sunday morning, uh, we have a member of our church, different people, go to a local grocery store who donates the bread that they don't sell. Uh, and it seems like such a small thing uh, for many people that it's just bread, it's just bread, what's the big deal, right? But for people who don't have very much food, people who are experiencing food insecurity, it is a huge deal. And we're going to read today about the significance of bread in antiquity in that time in the time of Jesus and a bread is important to us now but it's everything is so convenient uh, we can take it for granted so we're going to talk a little bit about that so yesterday it was living water today it's bread of life Jesus says I am the bread of life another I am statement from Jesus Christ Jesus says I am the bread of life so uh, let's begin our reading the gospel according to John chapter 6, starting at verse 26. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. Then they replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. They answered, Show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, my father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Word of God, word of life. Jesus is once again telling the disciples and those who were listening that he is the source. He is the bread. He is life-giving, the bread of life. So Jesus is, is telling the disciples and those who were there, 
believe in the one true source. Don't look to earthly things and don't be asking for miracles. I'm right here, Jesus is saying. I am the bread of life. And in that day, bread was so very important. You didn't just go to the grocery store to buy bread. Uh, it was an important part of daily life. If you remember, even in scriptures, um, in, in the Garden of Eden, uh, Adam was said uh, was told by God, you will toil in the earth. And that was to, to create wheat, and the wheat was to make bread. We know that um, bread in those times was a huge element of hospitality. Uh, breaking bread together as as a family, as a church, as uh, people gathered, breaking bread together is just so significant. And of course, the sacrament of Holy Communion, um, the element of the host. So bread is a big deal. But Jesus is saying, don't count on things of the earth. Just know that I am the bread of life. So I can't stress enough uh, that we need to continually go back to the source of life, uh, living water, bread of life, uh, like that bread that we are able to collect from uh, the grocery store every week that goes to our food pantries. Uh, it is a source of life, bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. Anything more, anything less uh, takes us out of alignment with what the Holy Spirit is calling us uh, to do and to be. So Jesus Christ is the bread of life. So again, I encourage you to read through um, the Gospel of John chapter 6. Uh, so yesterday was living water, today is bread of life. So know that all we need is, is Jesus uh, in these times. Uh, in these times of anxiety and stress and concern and worry of what's going to happen next, Look to Jesus Christ as your source. Uh, look to Jesus Christ as your foundation. Almighty God, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer is with us and has shown us the way. And the way is Jesus Christ. So I wanted to do a couple things today. Uh, as I had just said, talking about how bread is such a, an important part of our sacrament, um, of the host, I wanted to uh, invite you to join me in this prayer of spiritual communion because we won't gather for communion today. Most churches won't gather for communion today. Uh, and back in the 14th century, because of um, illnesses and a lot of different reasons, there were times when people also could not gather for uh, communion. So this prayer was written, and it's a prayer that um, speaks to Holy Communion. So I invite you to join me for this prayer. This is the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So that is the prayer of spiritual communion. So um, be thinking today about the bread of life, about the source of life. Uh, and who Jesus is in your life. It's so easy for us, as it was for the disciples in uh, our reading from today, to just get caught up. Caught up in provision, caught up in worry, caught up in what we need to see to believe. Uh, and Jesus is, is in us. Jesus is, is with us. So we're going to close our time together with a word of prayer. We have um, people that are in need of prayer, people that uh, others have asked to lift in prayer. So uh, we're going to join together in a word of prayer. And then at the end of our time of prayer, we'll join together in um, saying the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Almighty God, you are the source of life for us. Mind, body, and spirit. You fill us you renew us, 
your strength carries us. And we give you thanks and praise for the work that you are doing in the world. Almighty God, we call upon you today to be with us, to help us to feel and to know your presence. Lord, this morning we lift in our prayers Pete. We lift Drew K., Stasia Lemon, Karen, Penny, and Maria. Lord, you know the needs of these, your children, because we trust you, because we love you, because we know that you hear our prayers. We lift their names to you. Be a presence in their life. Renew them, restore health, bring comfort, bring hope. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you stand with us in the shadows, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then deal with us as seems best to you. For where you lead, we can confidently go with Jesus Christ our Lord. And now together we join in saying the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, uh, I'm so glad that you're here. Remember, today is, is church. Today's Sunday. So we have church online at 9, 30, and 11. going to talk a little bit about what we briefly discussed this morning. So I invite you to join us and invite a friend. Uh, there are so many people out there looking for some hope during these times. And when we gather together uh, in the Word, we can find that hope and we can be reminded. And we need to be reminded. So... Um, It was a joy to be with you this morning, and uh, I look forward to when we can gather again. Uh, Until I see you again, wherever that might be, peace be with you, my friends.